It is a special Sabbath for our pathfinders. And our pathfinders, as Pastor Jeff mentioned, they've been sharing the love of Jesus wherever they go. And they had that experience this past Sabbath when they went, and they have this ministry called Sharing and Caring. Sharing and Caring. It's not just about receiving, but it's also about giving. Giving to others what God has so powerfully given to each one of us. Today's message is called, Let It Shine. How many of you guys sung, This Little Light of Mine? Yes, I'm going to let it what? Shine. I'm going to let it shine. And looking back at this week and looking at the things that happened probably in some of our own families here in Fallbrook, like the Harris family, or distant in the state of Massachusetts or Texas, we, we, we ask ourselves, God, well, what is it that we can do in such a dark world? What can we do? And the Bible tells us, let it shine. Let it shine. The Bible speaks of hope, brothers and sisters. Amen? It speaks of a new heaven and a new earth. Something that God will bring in these times that we live in. That word light appears for the first time in the first book of the Bible, first chapter, ten times. Important word, isn't it? But it doesn't only relate to creation. It doesn't only relate to the stars and the sun. But in the book of Psalms, chapter 27, verse 1, it says that the Lord is my light and my I shall not fear. God is light. And some of us know also Psalm 119, 105, it says, Thy word is what? A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God, God himself, is light. And this is why he invites you and invites me to shine. Let's go to our passage found in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus spoke to a multitude of people who were there gathered around him, wanting to know what's going on. What, what can we do? What can we share? And Jesus shared with these people, his disciples and a big crowd that was on the mountain. And he said, blessed, happy. Do we want to be happy in this world, brothers and sisters? We have to only follow what Jesus tells us to do. And he spoke to them, blessed are the poor. Blessed are those that mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you. Verse 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad. Now we might look at this and go, wow, that does not sound like blessings, does it? To be poor in spirit, to be meek. People run over meek people, don't they? They, they stomp all over them. But Jesus invites us to shine in that way, to be different, to be Christ-like. Because these are all characteristics of Jesus, isn't it? Was Jesus meek? Was he a peacemaker? Was he persecuted? Did people speak ill about him? All these things. And Jesus said to them, Blessed, happy are you when you put these things into practice. Verse 13 and on. Ye are the salt of the earth. Pathfinders, what do we use salt for? In our food, to give it flavor. All right. Is this a tasteless world we live in? So God wants us to be salt, 
flavorful for him. But if the salt loses his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thence for good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Do we find a lot of tasteless people around the world today, brothers and sisters? Yes. Mean, evil. Yes. It gets, puts us to think sometimes, wow, what kind of a world do we live in? Where we have to be afraid of, of now anyone. But Jesus says to the contrary, verse 14, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. That joy, that peace that only God can give, can we hide it? We can't hide it. People notice it. People will ask you, why are you happy? Why are you smiling? And we can say, because Jesus told me to be the light of the world. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The message is simple. Turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. Don't be afraid. Don't hide what you know about Jesus. Let others know. And do we let them know only by speaking about it? What's the best way to tell people about Jesus and his love? By showing it. By showing it. By caring about others. By coming together. I'm getting now little by little. And I'll tell you this. Um, when I was like 20 years old, which was like, woo, 20 years ago. I saw a lot of fighting in one of the churches that I went. And I thought, wow, why did God ever invent church? It hurt me. And it hurt me even worse because I, I, was, I was studying to be a pastor. And I saw so much going on. And what was God trying to do here in telling us to come together? But you know, it's the only way we can let this light shine. I'm discovering that. I need to tell somebody else that I love them. Amen? I can't just tell that to myself. I need to let somebody else know that I care about them. Sincerely, truly care about them. And yes, sometimes the response is not going to be the one I expected. But still, Jesus is calling us to shine. Now I want to go briefly with you to the first epistle of John. First epistle of John. And John is there speaking to the church. He talks to them as little children. First epistle of John. Okay, I'm going to try this. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. First John, thank you. First John, chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. First epistle. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to briefly read through these 10 verses. Pay attention. Listen to it. What John is sharing with the church. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father 
and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not have the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Where does God want to have his word, brothers and sisters? In us. It's the only way we are going to be able to shine. Put the first word there, witness. Can we witness of something that we have not seen or heard? Can we? We can't. We can't be a witness of something we haven't read or heard. We can only talk about those things we know, we've read, we've seen. Are there a lot of promises in Scripture? Lots of promises. Are we to share this with others? The only way how we're going to be able to share it is if we take time to read it. God wants us to be a witness. In coming together, what are we forming here? Community. Are communities important? They're very important. I see this happening here at Fallbrook. There is community. And when something bad happens to somebody, what does this church do, brothers and sisters? They embrace that person. They come around that person. They share in the pain with that person. And that's exactly what happens. There is community. But just among ourselves, or is there more than just community with ourselves? There's community with God. There's fellowship with God the Father and God the Son. I want to say this to you, Pathfinders. I don't think we can have Fellowship with God if we don't have fellowship with each other. We can't. We can't have fellowship with God unless we have fellowship with each other. And that's something that our young people know well. Relationships are important. And not just important, but very important. This text tells us also God is what? He's light. He's true. He will not fail us. What he's promised, he will keep. He will do. So let us walk in what? Let us walk in the light. Let us walk in the truth. And to know the truth, we need to go back to Scripture. We can have fellowship because of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm a sinner. And the only way I can have fellowship with you is because of what Jesus Christ did on that cross for me. He forgave me my sins. Amen? And sin is what brings separation between us and between us and God. If we confess, if we recognize, if we admit that, God is what? Faithful and true to forgive us all of our sins unrighteousness. And I want to say, because of that, his word, what? Dwells in us. Because we accept the truth of the Bible. Because we accept the biblical message. We um, can shine for the Lord in this dark world. I want to share with you this quote from Council to the Church, page 343. 
man created man created for fellowship with God can only in such fellowship find his real life and development. Created to find in God his highest joy. He can find in nothing else that which can quiet the cravings of the heart, can satisfy the hunger and thirst of the soul. He who with sincere and teachable spirit studies God's word, seeking to comprehend its truth, will be brought in touch with its author. And except by his own choice, there is no limit to the possibilities of his development. Amen? Come in contact with the author of this book, the creator of heaven and earth. What's happening in America? I'll share with you. 88% of all Americans own what? A Bible. 80% of them believe this is God's word. But it says there's 61% what? Wish they read the Bible more. The Barna Group. And you can go to barna.org and you can see the whole study there. They, they, they were asked by the Bible Society if, if they could make a survey and find out what people in America are doing with the Bible or what they do, do they think. And especially after this mini series on the Bible and the History Channel. How many of you have been seeing that mini series? Um, people came out and they said, wow, 13.1 million of them watched that first day. That's one of the Biggest audiences for a non-sport event this year, 2013. So they came and they said, so are people really interested in the Bible? Well, this is what they found. They found that the influence of the all-time bestseller is losing ground. People are not as interested in reading their Bible anymore. In fact, they went from, sorry about that, they went from 86% in 2011 to 80% in 2013. Those who believe that the Bible is a sacred book or sacred literature. And look at this, from 67% to 61%, it, went, it dropped those who wish they read the Bible more. They believe that by the year 2040, if this trend keeps going on, Two out of every three people in the United States will not be reading their Bible. They won't be reading it. This is something else that they share with us. What are people in the church saying? Those who do go to church, those who, who, who believe in God and have their Bible. 87% are looking for practical tools to have a deeper understanding of the Bible. Can we say amen? Amen. So there are people in the church who are saying, yes, we want to, but where is this? Why, why can't we do this? 40% of them, these people who go to church, feel confused, doubtful, bored, discouraged when they read the Bible. That's what they said in their survey. And 20% of them said they have a deep study of the Bible in their church, while the rest desires to have one in their church. So only 20% of them feel that when they go to church, they actually study the Bible. And today we had an awesome Sabbath school, amen? All those who were here for Sabbath school, it was powerful. And so, so it's important to study God's word. What are people doing in the church? 54% of churchgoers read their Bible once a month or less outside of church. Is the Christian church going to be able to shine that way, brothers and sisters? We are not going to be able to shine that way. 43% of the 18 to 27-year-olds have left the church already. It's a big, big, big percentage that's missing. And 21% of the 18 to 27-year-olds feel confused about the Bible. And 16% of them are in doubt. Is there anything that we can do, Pathfinders? We can shine, right? We can shine for Jesus. Young people want wisdom from the Bible. And this is really interesting. For 
family or death issues. I'm dealing with illness and death. All the adults said they would go to the Bible. Only 28% 28 of them said they would go to the Bible to, to find out about illness or death. The, 20, the 18 to 27-year-old said, how many of them? 33%. For family conflict, 24% of the adults said they would go to the Bible. 40% of these young people said they would go to the Bible. For parenting, 22% of adults said they would go to the Bible. 42% of this generation said they would go to the Bible. For romance and sexuality, 17% of adults said they would go to the Bible. 30 percent of this group said they would go to the Bible. And for dating and relationships, 16 percent of all adults said they would go to the Bible. And 35 percent of the 17-year-olds to 28-year-olds said they would go to the Bible. But are they going to need help to understand it? Who's going to help? We are. We are to be that light. They are interested but nobody is telling them. Nobody is sharing with them. So they are leaving the church by the thousands. There are many who are crying out for the living God, longing for the divine presence. Let the word of God speak to what, brothers and sisters? The heart. Let those who have heard only tradition and human theories and maxims Hear the voice of him who can renew the soul unto eternal life. And how does God speak to us? Through his word. God wants to speak to our hearts. He wants to tell us the blessings that he has in store for us. I want you to open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. Pastor Jeff has been preaching about the three angels' message. What a powerful message we've been given as a church to share to this world. And next Sabbath, he's going to be sharing with us again the second angel's message. But I want to go to Revelation chapter 18 and verse 1. Because I believe this tells us our mission as a church. And it says, after these things, after these tragic things that are happening in the world, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was darkened. Is that what it says? And the, door, the, the earth was what? Lightened, enlightened with his glory. Whose glory? God's glory. Do we have a mission as a church to fulfill? Pathfinders? We need to be what? We need to be a light. We need to shine in this dark, dark world. When I finished school, I went to my first church. And after a year, I believe, the treasurer of the church came he said, Samuel, I want to talk to you. I want to share with you something. And this was an older man, an experienced man, a man who had lived life. He was the treasurer of our church, and he didn't know much about computers. All his numbers, he did it by hand. And, and, and he kept perfect record of what was happening with the finances of our church. And praise God for treasurers. Amen? Keep our church going. Praise God. And this man was dedicated. He had been doing this for 15 years at this church. And I had the privilege one day of going with him to the conference office because he was going to receive an award from the conference office for, for being such a good treasure. Wow, what a privilege. I was going to be his translator. He hadn't had the privilege of going to school, and, and so I was there translating for him, telling him what they were saying, and then he said a few words. But this man told me something that reminded me why we come to church. And he
he said, Samuel, before I became an Adventist, I used to drink a lot. And I mean a lot. And I went to work. I had my beer here. And I was drinking. Well, I was driving. And I drove big trucks. I had a six-pack, and that would disappear in no time. I would come back from work, do the same. I would come home, I would go to the bar. You see this? That was a bottle that somebody broke on my face. I was constantly getting in fights. But the day I met Jesus, that changed. I haven't touched a drop and he told me the years, and he was proud of saying it. Yes, I'm an alcoholic. I know I am. But I don't drink by God's grace. The change, the transformation that can happen in someone's heart. If we as pathfinders, as church members, are not afraid to shine in this dark world. Amen? There's a lot of people out there we're watching you. They're watching me. They're looking for something different. And they want to know if there really are people who take this book to heart. There really are people who, who, who practice what is written in this book. And if I understand the message of the Bible, it's to be a light because Jesus, what? lives in us because his word resides in us. And because of that, I believe that in these times, this prophecy will be fulfilled. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Amen.